In this final video on soil temperature, we want to talk with some South Dakota no-till producers. Notice the themes we talked about earlier keep recurring, regardless of where you go in the state. We do find in the no-till situation a little bit colder soil temperature, but we move the residue from the row, trying not to move any soil. We try to move the residue from the row so that uh, the soil is exposed and it warms up. Okay. And it warms up very quickly. Now, if we have a cold spring, uh, our crops probably don't look as good in June as uh, the neighbors who are doing full tillage. Yes. But we don't harvest the crop in June. We harvest it in October, November. <laughs> um, I would say our soils, maybe they're two degrees colder than a fully tilled soil. Yeah. And that's compared to a soil that was probably tilled in the fall okay. and sat there all winter with the wind blowing on it, fully exposed to the weather and the wind and everything. <clears throat> so I'll, I'll take my chances with two degrees colder than rather than having my soil exposed all winter, I guess. Yeah. Of course, that soil is not warming up as, as fast if, it, if it's got a nice layer of residue on top of it compared to black dirt. Uh, but as we go along on the flip side of that, that, that residue will keep that soil cooler and more moist, so then there's a real advantage. I don't tend to worry so much about the soil temperature as much as the soil moisture. Yes. Uh, that is our key. We have to have the moisture to get anything started. We're going to warm up pretty fast. It's never, never been much of an issue. Okay, Barrett. Side by side, conventional versus no-till corn planted at the same time. Cooler spring soil temperatures are a non-issue by the time you get to harvest. Merit or myth? We'll still let you decide.